Hi, my name is Bill Lowe, and this is the first of a series called Legendary Locos. This is about local people who are still living, who have made a difference in the history of our country, our state, and our town, Mariposa. It could be that you might be living on property they used to own. Today, we're gonna to be speaking with Sally McGreedy Wallace and her son, Jeff Liston. And they, uh, he's the grandson and she's the daughter of John McGreedy, aviation pioneer. She wrote this book. I hope you will enjoy this episode. I'm gonna stick my tongue out. So, what is your name, by the way? What is my name? Yes, uh, what is your name? Sally Wallace. Sally McCready Wallace. Oh, okay, great, great. We have the right person now. Oh, <laughs> oh gee whiz. <laughs> I'm in the right no place. <laughs> Well, the first thing we should discuss is where were you born, Sally? Dayton, Ohio. And you probably don't want to give us the date of your birth. Oh, sure, 1926, I think. Oh, great, 1926. And how many siblings did you have? One. Now, Sally, who was your father? John A. McCready. Why don't you tell us a little bit about John McCready? Well, he was a very strong person, mentally and physically. Um, when he said jump, we said how high, that kind of thing, you know. <laughs> he didn't talk a lot, um, but he did a lot. And of course, he was a pilot. Okay, Sally, so let's um, look into your book here of your father and look at some of your father's aviation achievements. It looks like in 1921, he went pretty high. Mm -hmm, yeah, he went up as high as the plane would go. And how high did he fly? Oh. I'm testing you on your book. Uh, <laughs> we'll read the book. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It was uh, a little over forty thousand. And did John need oxygen to do that? They used a welder's flask in the day. That was their that was their idea to make up for the lost oxygen at high altitude was to use a welder's flask and uh, a cannula so that they could put it on his face. And uh, he, he was able to manually operate the valve. It wasn't always on, it wasn't always off. But if he felt that he was getting a little lightheaded or something, he would open the oxygen up to keep himself uh, wow. basically flying that plane so it didn't come down to earth in a big heap. Did your father ever tell you how it affected him after he did this test? Brutal on his body. He said he just it wouldn't wouldn't want to wish it on anyone else to have to do that ever again. You lose consciousness. There's not enough oxygen. Um, your yeah. your body, like your eardrums, rupture. Just oh, like just it's just the opposite of going down in depth. You're going up in in altitude, and it's it's uh, well, it's the reverse. It would be an implosion versus an explosion. Oh yeah. And, uh, yeah. He's, yeah. His arrows. He always lost. You know, forever. So his, 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 his hearing his was were damaged. damaged. It was. Yeah. Uh -huh. It says here your father was the first crop duster. Was that out of necessity? Yeah, I, mm -hmm. think the, uh, mm -hmm. I think the U.S. Agriculture Department came out and asked him and the Air Force to come up with some method to, I think they were spraying for moth. There was some type of a, a bug or something, and they wanted yeah. to be able to dust it and kill it. And right. this, they were having trouble getting it to get it onto the ground and spread out. It would come out, but it would come out in a lump. So they kept right. trying to, you know, agitate it and do different things to it to try to get it spread out while they were spraying it. And they finally got it nailed down. They figured it out. But for a while there, they were struggling along getting this to get out of the hopper and get on the ground. Then your father in 1922 had the endurance record flight uh, in San Diego, California for 35 hours and 18 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he stayed up there. Again, in the same year, later on, he made the world record endurance flight in Dayton, Ohio, of 36 hours, 4 minutes, and 34 seconds. So two records he broke in the same year. Tell us about this. Altitude, endurance, and distance. He had those three in that year, I think. Wow, your father had a lot of achievements in 1923. Uh, here it is right here, the first nonstop transcontinental flight yeah. from New York to San Diego. It appears that he failed the first two times. What was the reason for that? Yes, on the, on the West Coast flight, 
when they tried to fly back to the East Coast, they couldn't get the altitude to get over the mountains. They were stuck. Yeah, that's true. They could not get back. So coming from the East Coast was a little easier with a full tank of gas because he didn't have to go to a higher altitude because the mountains were not as tall. Mm -hmm. I know that they looked at um, coming from the East Coast to the West Coast and the idea was that there was some atmospheric condition that right. if they followed this river of air right. through the Midwest and so forth, it would be much easier for them to get through that stretch than it would be to come from the West Coast flying to the East Coast. Okay, it says here, um, your father in 1923, he did the first aerial photographic expedition of America. What was this about? Yeah, I think it was part of, the, like you said, part of the World's Fair. And I think uh, we were able to put it out, let people see what their, you know, National Geographic was doing to give them a visual in the United States of what was out there, what, you know, the mountains look like, what different areas look like. Well, it looks like your father was the first Google Earth of 1923. It's true. Oh, 1923. Yeah. yeah. It says here, your father did the first night parachute jump from a plane. The plane was burning. It was on fire. Can you tell us anything about that? Does it show there what, what happened? I'm testing you. Because uh, I, I wasn't there. Uh, but um, I don't know how I got burned. But Well, I heard it was engine failure, and maybe it, it caught on fire. I'm not quite sure. But he made the jump there at night, not knowing where he was going to land. And he, it was very successful, except for he got caught up in a tree. And so they had to cut him down. You remember this? No, I don't. I did not remember Otherwise, that. you would speak up. Yeah, I would. Mm -hmm. I think he, he once flew in the uh, Reno Air Races, too, didn't he, Mom? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's great. That's not in the book. I don't even think it's an addendum to anything. But the plane that he was flying crashed. And he walked away from that plane at the Reno Air Races. And I think that was the, kind of his last hurrah for flying because he said he was lucky, very lucky that he was still alive. And Mother said that she didn't want him to fly anymore. Yeah, there could be other reasons <laughs> Let's too. Let's face Absolutely. it. <laughs> so. Wow. So Sally, how's your life as a young lady? Fantastic. Did you travel to different places while your father was in the service? And what were some of the cities? I knew you were going to ask that. I haven't the foggiest idea. I was about four years old. Four years old. <laughs> yeah, I have the faintest idea where we went. So your father bought the ranch that is now known as Lush Meadows. And then he bought the property over at uh, the beach, beach, the beach house. He had several properties. Oh yeah, he was really into that. During your years of schooling, did you go to school in Mariposa? No. We did not. Where did you go to school? We had tutors. Wow, you had tutors. And when we didn't have tutors, we, were, we all went to, I mean, mother and I and my sister all went to, uh, took a place in San Francisco, uh, an apartment. And we went the rest of the way of our education there. That I remember. <laughs> That's great. There, was, there were trolley cars, and we got to see on the trolley cars, stuff like that. But it was just mother and Joanne and I. Daddy stayed on the ranch. Did you enjoy being in San Francisco? Was it pretty? I think so, yeah. Uh -huh. I had some friends. Oh, yeah, we had a lot of friends there, and they all came up to the ranch every summer. The whole bunch of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember that. That must have been fun to bring your friends up to the ranch. Uh-huh. They just thought it was fun, too. So how many acres was the ranch? I don't even have, know how many acres I have here. So I had no idea. And you went horseback riding? We were horseback riding, we, tent, we had a swimming pool, we um, played tennis, he put in a tennis court. Oh, that must have been great. When the girls weren't there, while Joanne and I were out there, you know, rounding up the cattle and stuff like that. Right. So, yeah, I remember. Did you have a favorite horse? Babe, babe. yeah, babe. Babe, yeah. all right. She was a, pe a Palomino. Palomino. Tricky as the Dickens. I would put my foot in the stirrup and try to leave it, and she would take one little step that way, and I'd go plunk on the ground. So she was kind of mischievous. Uh, uh, that's a hard word for me to say. Yeah, she was very mischievous. Mischievous. <laughs> that's a hard word for you to say, too. Yeah, yeah. Joanne and I had to milk the cows, and invariably they kicked 
bucket. <laughs> and I never got any milk. <laughs> Mother was in charge then. And, uh, yeah, it was. You've brought out a lot of stuff that I haven't thought about for years. That's what it's all about memories. I never thought about some of these. Yeah, but Mother was definitely a city girl. She didn't have any clue how to do anything like that. So we, Joy and I kind of, I think we cleaned the pool and stuff like that. The big pool, a little bit, a little bit smaller than this one out here. Right, right. And the original ranch house is gone. Somebody's moved in. So the house is still there. It's, it's, it's still there. People are living there. It's occupied and it's just like it was. Because I go, I go down to see it. Oh, that's one. wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. They, they've saved a bit of history. Oh, yeah. Your father went back into the service during World War II. Was that when your mother decided to sell the property, which is now Lush Meadows? It was, it was sold when mother was on the ranch by herself and daddy was in the service. This was a big big deal because she sold it right out from under my dad and he, I don't think he ever quite forgave her for that because he had wanted to have Los Chilitos for the rest of his life. <laughs> so that was a boondoggle right there. Why do you think Nellie J sold it? Oh, mother didn't know from nothing. I mean, she wasn't a business woman at all and it was too much for her to handle. I, yeah. I can understand why she did that. but. You know, it was it was a lot of property. Yeah. And there was our house and the pool and the tennis court up there, and then down below was all of the, the horses and stuff. Yeah. So, and I don't, she was, she was a city girl. She was from San, San Francisco. Yes. She had no c concept of what to do for a lot. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, he came home and he was beside himself. He was yeah. not, Happy. Wow, wow. After you finished your high school education, mm -hmm. did you go on to college? Yeah. And where did you go to college? Oregon State University. What did you study? Engineering. Did you enjoy studying engineering? Yeah, that's why I took it. <laughs> <laughs> and what skills did you learn from engineering? Uh, about airplane mechanics? Mostly airplanes, yeah. Because you were in love with airplanes. Yeah. Sally, who got you interested in airplanes? Oh, my dad. And he too was a pilot. Yeah, yeah, he was, he was happy about that. Happy with what? Very proud, actually, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. Later on when yeah, he did Yeah, that's me. great. Mm -hmm. To be an engineer, I mean, I mean to, to, be, to, to fly, really. To fly. But to keep the plane in shape. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good idea. Just, you know, for kicks. <laughs> <laughs> Now, after you finished college... And I got married. You got, got married? married? Mm -hmm. To whom? Jim Liston. One time you mentioned that someone urged you to fly. Was that your husband or was that your husband, your second husband, Tom Wallace? Probably my second husband because I think that may be where we got on the airplane. Okay. Now, I have read that you had trained as a Borat bomber pilot for firefighting in Chico, California. Oh, when, did, when was that? That was with the second husband. When you were married to Tom Wallace. What was your duty as a Borat bomber pilot? Uh, was that to spot fires? Yeah, yeah, spot, spot fires. Why don't you tell us about the flight that you and your friend Bob Hennigan took that replicated your father's 1923 transcontinental flight? I know that we were piling fuel on the just as much as we could. Yes. And we took off at 2 o'clock the next morning. I remember that, because I was up. Or the men in the tower was asking us where we were going, and we said, we're going to San Diego. <laughs> and they said, where are you stopping for gas? And we said, we aren't. Long, long pause in the office down there. Go, well, good luck. You know? <laughs> I did all the flying. He you did, did all the flying. He just sat there and looked out the window. <laughs> Why did you do this? Why did you take this flight? Oh, yeah, for my dad. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh -huh. Were you nervous? No, I wasn't nervous for some reason or other. Not like I was when I first started with you <laughs> this morning. No, I wasn't nervous because I knew I was going to do it one way or the other. Well, anyway, we came in, and we came into Balboa, and 
in that area, and it was the same time as Bush was coming in from the opposite direction and the big ship, you know. So they were going to push us off to someplace else, uh -huh. and we're not too happy about that. Yeah. But um, the, the Navy commander called them up and, on, and, in the ship and said, look, we got somebody that's got to come in right now. So right. We held off the president. <laughs> <laughs> From what I understand, you have flown many planes. Uh, what is your favorite plane? The Mooney 201. Tell me about the Mooney 201. Oh, it's right up there on the wall somewhere. That was my favorite airplane. That was a hot little airplane, I tell you. And what was so special about that plane? Oh, it was kind of cute, and it always looked like it wanted to just get going. And I took care of that. <laughs> Great. My second husband was a, a, a pilot, and so we had an airplane together. When did you marry Tom Wallace? You and Tom got married, it was uh, 1984. Four. Correct. <laughs> you built the house here on this ranch with Tom Wallace, and did you also, uh, you know, have cattle on this ranch? You would lease for the for the cattle. Lease, lease it. Okay, like we are now. Right, and, okay. and Tom was in um, food concentrate. Remember? Oh yeah. Out there, at Mills Orchard, they did yeah. plums and prunes. Yeah, and he had big orchards. Wow. Lots like of it. big orchards that I got stuck with when he died. <laughs> oh, gosh. You know, there's a lot of people who would die to have all of this property you've had over the years. I know. I know. And it's all overwhelming. Maybe you're a city girl. Are you mostly a city girl? Yeah, I, th I think so. I want to get be good, better roads j just looking at it, but the, to drive in and out of here leaves me kind of cold. <laughs> but that's another story. Now you and Tom moved up here while you were married, and when Tom passed away, you moved back to Chico? Let's see, you know, we were on the ranch, his, his ranch. Yeah. So I Hamilton stayed. City. Hamilton City. Yeah, that's where we were when he died. Another piece of property? I think I sold it to Hamilton City, didn't I? Yes, you did. And I really like Chico. Right. Then you eventually moved back here to Mariposa. Do you know how much acreage you have? Yeah, do you have, know how many acres it is? It's almost 800. Okay. Well, let's talk about this property. You have a pond. Mm-hmm. In the early years, did Jeff and the kids play in the pond? Oh, yeah. We had a lot of, the families were here all the time. And what special events have been held on this ranch? Oh, yeah, the wagon train was here. Yeah, this other one I'm talking about is totally different, and right. it's up in Northern California. Yeah, Talking about this yeah. Property. Okay. This property. Yeah. Uh -huh. it, yeah. Jeff got it. Boy, talk about good. Oh yeah. Here, take it over. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's. Oh. Okay. Okay. This was an earlier representation, of, really, of years ago when they had the uh, fair. They oh, okay. they didn't always have the fair down at the fairgrounds what we know as today, which is down on Highway 49. Um, a lot of times early on it was up here in Jerseydale or it was in Dara or it oh, may have yeah. been in North County even That's in Mariposa. Right. So they had it in different locations to try to satisfy all the population of the county. And it was interesting, but today we have Wagon Train which kind of follows the same route out of Yosemite and it does come into the Four Corners and it is around the same time of the year as the fair. Oh, great. Yeah. But my dad did start a a fair, a small fair, right there at the foregrounds. And there's a, you'll see if you go in the, you know, court, uh, the schoolhouse, that there's a, a, a thing there that shows that it was McCready that put uh, all these people to, you know, they had different, you remember? Right, yeah. talking about the big plaque. Yeah, the yeah, the big stuff. plaques, and McCready was having a speed, you know, all kinds of games and on horseback and off. Jeff, tell us about the Four Corner Schools. Yeah, the, the Dare Schoolhouse, um, when my family first moved up here, uh, it was in pretty bad disrepair. Um, we did go down and with some of the contractors locally and so forth, established a group that would help to preserve it. Um, I think we even got it uh, established as a historical site. Um, and then uh, we got a little bit of help from the county, but we did get it back in order and it was operational. And at that point then, Kiwanis came in and took over and they 
started using it as a school, which is what really my grandfather was looking to do all along, was to have it an educational site for children so that it would help them in the future. Was that parcel part of the ranch at that time? It was cut out separate. Cut out separate. It was. It was, it was years ago given to the, uh, to the county for the schoolhouse, so they had a place to put it because at the time they didn't, they didn't know where to leave it or take it from Mount Buckingham School where it's at, which is directly across from us about two miles away. So Jeff, as you grew up, did you spend a lot of time at the ranch that is known as Lush Meadows? Quite a bit, quite a bit. The only time that we didn't go back and forth, say during the summers or on weekends, um, would have been when we were in Phoenix, Arizona, and that was only a few years time. Um, but the other times that we lived in California, whether it was Los Angeles or Chico, it seems like we were always coming back and forth. Oh, wow. And uh, well, what need a lot of help. My grandfather needed a lot of help, so we were always up here. We built fences, we helped the work on the roads and we were, you know, planting trees or different projects and stuff. And we continue to do that today. One of the fun things was that I had my uh, plane in this last couple of years why I flew down to the ranch every single month and sent five days in the airplane. And that was neat. <laughs> That's great. And my sister, my sister and I had bought an airplane together, but then she kind of copped out, so. <laughs> <laughs> you would give her a ride sometimes yeah. Yeah. together. Yeah. Yeah. It, was a, yeah. it was a wonderful life. <laughs> Did you land at the airport here in, in Mariposa? Oh, yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Called up and said, we're coming in. Hey, watch out. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, we're great easy coming. Yeah. So when Lush Meadows was sold, did you come up to this ranch uh, to, to hang out? Uh, what was here at that time? There was the house that I'm in today. Uh -huh. Yeah, we call that the Citadel. And then there was another small cabin over here. And then there, was, was, there wasn't anything here? As far as this year, no. Yeah, there you, wasn't. You and Tom built this. Yeah, from, from the ground up. Yeah. Right. Okay. So Jeff, you run the ranch. So how many heads of cattle do you have right now? Yeah, it, it, it varies, about uh, 40 to 50. That's enough. That's, that is enough. It's sometimes if you get too many, we've had trouble with erosion. I saw a horse. Oh, right. yeah. Right. We do. We, we, it was my idea that uh, this <laughs> horse, the horse was in bad shape. It had gotten hurt earlier on, so you yeah. really can't ride it too much. And I thought that it should spend the rest of its time enjoying um, well, wide open spaces instead of being pinned up. So we brought it up here to kind of restore it until it's uh, moving to the next space. Now, I remember one time hearing that the land is protected. Oh, yeah, we have a conservation easement. Great, great. So it's, it's part of the conservancy. It is part of the conservancy, and it does uh, help to keep the property really as it is now, like a forest. We are also a tree farm and so forth and so on. So yeah, it, it, it just keeps it in its natural state. It won't ever be developed into a hotel. This last year, Sally, you were in a parade, weren't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, by the way, by yeah, the way. that was a pleasant surprise. I didn't know that even went on. And uh, and I, you know, got in the carriage and still didn't know what was going on. Was that the Mariposa Butterfly Festival parade? Yeah. You were in Frank and Kent's car, and you were Grand Marshal, weren't you? Was there a lot of people there watching the parade? Oh, I waved and I smiled and I did all the things. You should say. <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw you there, Jeff, cheering your mom on. <laughs> <laughs> so is there anything more you'd like to talk about, uh, your years here in Mariposa? Hmm. Well, we, we're lucky because we haven't had any fires. That's true. That's true. Soon after this last interview, the Ferguson fire broke out, so we had to cancel further interviews with Sally. Luckily, her property was not touched by this fire, but as of today, which is the 6th of August, the fire still rages. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Legendary Locos. We hope you tune in to future episodes as they become available.